Hello everyone, Van Gel here. Today we're going to be doing a podcast with a friend of mine over the topic, Stop Being a Bitch, Bitch, Make Life Your Bitch. And my partner here is... Boston from Audience of One. Excellent. So let's get right into the nitty gritty, shall we? What do I mean by stop being a bitch, bitch? Ultimately, is there a recurring problem in your life? Something that keeps bothering you? Maybe multiple problems? This is the idea here. If you have a problem that keeps reoccurring in your life, that is a cue for you to do something about it. Otherwise, you are the bitch. What do you think about this, Brent? I can see where you're going with it. The topic. A lot of people complain and just want to be heard versus actually doing something about it. Anything else about that? (laughs) Uh, Just that it happens in every aspect of life and it seems to be a ongoing problem that people use as an escape versus actually doing something about it. And what I mean by that is a lot of people find it normal to complain to someone instead of doing something about it. They're too busy focused on being heard and complaining and hoping that someone else will do something else about it and then complaining about them not doing something about it. And then it just becomes a vicious cycle. Actually, that's exactly what I was thinking is a vicious cycle because I've given a speech in the past about destruction versus creation because it's a lot easier to destroy in particular example the idea of when you're not doing something about it and just complaining We'll put this in the destruction category because you, without knowing about it, you're influencing other people negatively with information of just complaining. Whereas the. If you're crea- not careful, yeah. Yes. And the creation category being the difficult part of doing something about it, doing something constructive to take care of the problem and while another equivalent to this of destruction versus creation how long does it take to make a cake depends on the cake some cakes take longer than others yes now how long does it take it for that child at that party to knock it over and destroy it oh 2.2 seconds exactly it's a lot less effort to bitch about something and complain than to look for an answer to the problem. Even when you do have an answer to the problem, executing it is another step. I'm going to stop you right there because I think that that's what a lot of people use as an excuse is to do something about it, like you said, takes more effort and requires them to actually do something about it versus complaining about it it doesn't take much effort they can say it to whoever and how however many people they want where doing something about it relies on them and a lot of people these days want instant gratification and to fix a complaint versus complaining about it isn't instant gratification because it requires effort And that, so people are like, why am I going to put in the effort to fix something that they know is small potatoes? A lot of times, if someone's complaining about something, let's use going into a fast food joint and the fries are cold, or they messed up someone's order. Well, instead of doing something about it, going up pretty nice and being, you know, creative criticism and say, you know, hey, my fries are cold, they go up there and they throw the fries at the people and they get an attitude and complain and then get mad when their problem doesn't get solved and is escorted out of the building in handcuffs versus going up there nicely and saying, hey, your fries are cold, you know, you didn't make a fresh batch or something along those lines. Like you said, to do something about it takes more effort and a lot of people aren't willing to put in that effort. 
That's a good point. Now here's my counterpoint is the more effort it takes to get something done. Now there are cases where there's exceptions, but by and large, the more effort it takes to get something done, once you have it done, you get more of a good feeling about it. There's more competence to the person who tries to get something done as opposed to the person who just complains about it. In addition, how many of you all who are listening have met a person who you just thought, man, this person complains too much. Do you want to be that person to the people you want to be friends with? And what do you think, Brent? I mean, I definitely agree with that. I'd definitely raise my hand to that question. But I think in the heat of the moment, a lot of people don't think of that question. Yes. In the heat of the moment, a lot of people aren't thinking, am I being that person that I don't want to be friends with? Am I being that person that I hate hearing complain? They're just too busy trying to get what's bothering them off their chest. And yes. I think that's more of perspective. A lot of people who complain aren't thinking of the perspective of the person that they're complaining about or the person they're complaining to. A lot of times if you're complaining about someone not doing something they're supposed to or doing something wrong, you don't know what's going on in their life. You don't know what they might be dealing with or if you know they have something going on at home that they are sidetracked about or the person you're complaining to. What if they're having a rough day? And it's out of nowhere, you just start complaining to them, and they're like, I don't want to listen to you. However, the type of person that I'm talking about who were saying, oh, I don't want to be with that person, they complain too much. The person that I'm talking about in particular is a person who complains about many different things. And you get a general feel of when someone complains about a lot of things, and with that, you have that instinctual thought of, what? Is this a person just not doing anything about their problems? Or they're expecting other people to fix their problems? Because if they're having a lot of recurring problems, then that is more of a character flaw. At least the instinct, the response we're getting, that they have some kind of character flaw of oh, not down. doing. And yeah, that's the kind of person I'm talking about. Because... If a person develops the habit of making sure that if they are having reoccurring problems in their life, to do whatever is in their power to fix that, they will become even more competent of a person in addition to, of course, being less of a burden on the people around them. But I think it's also one of those, the people who complain all the time, those people that you look at and you're just like, all you do is complain. I think there's a deeper rooted issue that they're either refusing to acknowledge, trying to hide, or trying to avoid. Most people, like you talk about, eventually get to a point where they just want to fix it. They want to do something about it. They hit a point where they almost realize themselves that they complain about everything and they want to do something about it or they just want to stop. Those people who don't, I feel, might even be depressed. Uh, are looking for attention in a way mm -hmm. because they're complaining just to talk to someone. They're complaining just to get someone to agree with them. So I feel like those people that we're talking about that are just complaining constantly about every little thing in their life, I think are just rather... Again, I'm, not doc I'm no doctor, so to say that they're depressed or suicidal or something like that is not a medical diagnosis. Yes. But I did say at Holiday Inn last night. It, but I feel like those are the people that are usually in a dark place and they're trying to get... Um, what am I looking to say? Well, I know what you're talking about is if someone's has so many of these burdens that they start getting into that dark place, is that about what you're saying? Yeah, that it's... They they're in a they're dark place they and they just do. they just want some physical yes um, they need something back right now 
Yeah, or they just want to be able to talk to someone and they don't know how to talk to someone, so they complain about something. They're just trying to open a path of communication. And a lot yes. of people, all you're doing is complaining, so they don't want to talk to you, which only amplifies the way they're feeling. Yes. They don't realize that they need to just have a conversation. Um, so, And again, that's not everybody. I think there's just yeah, people out that's there That's understandable, but that's precisely why I'm saying to try, and this is to everybody, to develop the habit of when you have a reoccurring problem to as soon as possible try to do something about it because imagine those of us who have played many RPGs we know about health regeneration as well as different damage over time effects imagine a depressing situation we'll use these complaint problematic situations as a dot it's a weight on you over time now let's say you get into an argument with someone at work a disagreement and you don't finalize it and you're both angry after that day now you have one weight on you one problem that you can complain about later now let's say you slip in fall on a, we'll just say a banana because somebody has a habit at work of throwing bananas on the floor you get angry but you don't do anything about it now you have another weight you see the issue here is once you have a certain number of weights on you the dot effects stack up to where their combined degeneration on your mental health meter is greater than your ability to regenerate and then you'll rapidly as you get more and more problems that you're not solving you'll get into that extremely depressive state and potentially be one of those people who explodes and you don't want to become that you want to try as best as you can to deal with the problems while they're small while you can that way you have a more calm and stable mental state throughout yeah there's uh actually a cartoon on some social media that i stumbled across that it's a stick figure so to speak and he's he's uh colored white and he walks around and he inter he interacts with other uh, stick figures who are shaded different levels of black <clears throat> and he will go and give someone a hug or go into a store, bump into someone, and some other shade of black rubs off onto him. And at the end of it, he's solid black, and you can clearly tell that he's in a depressive state. Yes. And I forget how it ends, but at some point, he does something that drains all the black out of him. And you can that's another way of looking at it, is you go around and you get these instances that happen to you that get you frustrated or give you an excuse to complain about something and they just fill you up to a point where you have a book or a, a list full of complaints that you can use and you need to do something to negate those to cross those off your list to drain yourself and, and get yourself back to a happy medium because no one there's always going to be something that's bothering you there's always going to be something that yes. weighs on you <clears throat> so Although I'm going to stop you right there. Because yes, there is always going to be something that weighs on you, which is precisely why, similar case to why, you always have chores that you need to do, but you do them as you go. That way you don't have to do a bunch of them all at once. Like let's say, we'll say you have a vacuuming once a week just as a an easy way to start with, as opposed to waiting a whole year now you have a lot more work on your hand so if you do the a whole year's worth of vacuuming as well as a whole year's weight of dishes as weird as that would sound a whole years of clothes and trying to do all those at once especially with all that just weighing on you this is why you want to try to do it in a smooth fashion, taking care of the problems while they're small. Well, now you're delving into <laughs> OCD and all that other stuff, ADD, and people who, like myself, yes. go through waves of, 
I'm not doing dishes, and then one day yes. you walk by the Take dishes care and of the you're like, while they're small. Well, sometimes you walk by a problem like a sink full of dishes, and you're like, all right, I finally need to do those. I have mm-hmm. the energy. I have the mindset. I have the annoyance yeah, at level. The same that time, needs to you be got done. a tub full of dirty clothes too, and then that's you go, not a problem though yes. because it doesn't bother me that much. Well, it might bother some other people. It, that's it, what I'm saying. I'm sure it does, but. It's, that's delving into a whole nother can of worms, but I get where you're going with this. I definitely, that's why everyone has, uh, a, should have a vice. And by vice, I mean something along the lines of something to do to cheer you up, whether it's working out, hanging out with friends, watching a certain TV show, coloring, drawing, listening to music, playing music. Like you said, there needs to be something that. You can almost check back to and use to the point where if you're using this vice every day, then there's probably a complaint you have or something weighing on you that you need to deal with instead of letting it build up for a year or until you get that list full of complaints that you're just looking to unleash onto someone to listen to you. So at the end of the day, just don't bitch. (laughs) To use the title. Still a bitch. I want to go at this from another angle, too, because there are probably some people who are screaming at us, wait, what about... Well, I mean, I do like different perspectives. Yes. When dealing, since this is a lot of times with people, the interactions of people, one of the common excuses not to deal with it is you don't want to be mean. This is very common today, and I want to go, I have a mantra is, first, of course, you want to lead with kindness when it comes to dealing with people, but I do want to stress, in the moment that your kindness is taken advantage of, such as a, let's say you are in an argument, we'll use a particular person from our local card shop we're not going to say his name but let's say that they have a really powerful and everybody else is knowing this commander deck and everyone else disagrees with them hey you should probably switch this out and they respond strongly say no this is fine what are you doing but you don't say anything back and just blindly agree because you don't want to incur his wrath being excessively mean. The moment that kindness is disrespected, that is when you are allowed to be mean, I guess you could say, and push back because it is important not to let people walk all over you. If you feel like you're one of those people who gets pushed around a lot this could be the reason why is you might be allowing yourself to be too much of a punching bag and not fighting back to defend yourself verbally and it is perfectly okay to fight back verbally if your kindness is disrespected I mean I don't know if I agree with that completely I have a mentality more of You can't argue with someone who agrees with you. And I don't mean (laughs) agree with everything they say, but almost... Have you ever seen Kung Fu Panda? Yes. The one where he takes the cannonball and kind of loops it around and throws it back. Oh, yes. And In that sense of if someone argues with you and calls you, we are being mean. Yeah, you're right. I I might be being a little bit mean, but you're trying to play a deck that no one else wants to play with. Well, I think you're wrong. And I very well may be wrong, but in this sense... the majority seems to be ruling and we're only playing with you because we don't want to hurt your feelings or something along those lines. So when it's agreeing with someone, you don't have to agree with exactly what they're saying, but you can agree with them to a degree that allows you to get your point across. Yes. Like I said, you're being mean. I very well may be mean. Yes, you are right. But I'm only being mean because you won't seem to listen to anything that anyone else is saying. So in that sense, they can't argue with you because you disagreed with them. So what are they going to say? 
you're wrong. You disagreed with me. So how can I be wrong if I disagreed with you? Now they might try a different tactic, like I said. Well, and they rattle off something else and you agree with that. They, again, can't come back and argue with that because you just agreed with them. So either they're going to stop talking, walk away. And I've realized that that is actually a good technique because if you start getting into a verbal altercation, you never know where it's going to lead. You never know what That's emotions true. are going to get hit, what buttons are going to be pushed, especially if you don't know this person very well. And it could turn into, I mean, a fist fight. Um, they could go out and slash your tires. I mean, break a window. You don't know what, again, mental state someone's in. Um, so to, I guess you say de-escalate in that sense is always worked for me. Even in a case where someone is going against the grain, so to speak. So, um, but again, at that point, you also got to see it from his perspective, which we all, we all, as in you and I and everyone at the card shop, knows that his perspective is just him trying to be perfect and be the quote unquote best in the shop. Even though if he were to go pro, he would get his butt kicked in turn three or turn two, and he would throw a fit because, well, your deck is, and insert excuses here. Because. Heaven forbid someone else play a deck of the same power level as this individual. If you try to play a deck of the same powerful power level, he's going to police the crap out of you. And say, oh no, that, that's unfair. You're going to run away with the game immediately. I mean, but that even happens not even just in cards, but I mean in mm-hmm. all aspects of life. Yes. I mean, you look at... Someone who's used to being the bully, once you get someone, or even if yourself, of equivalent level... Then they start looking, at, tell, pointing at you as the bad guy. It's like, no, this is unfair. You're too strong. It's like, no, or not I'm even the same that. Power level. If you buy the same exact you're car, you're just a coward. Or even if you buy the same exact car, they're gonna say, well, my car has a moonroof. Or you buy the same shoes. Well, my I bought mine first. Or you mm-hmm. buy, yes, anything. They're gonna try to point out something that makes theirs just a hint better, even if it's something as stupid as they bought it first or there is more original or you copied them so in that sense there's always going to be people out there that are always trying to get a like a a foot up up on you you. yeah and it's i do want to stop you real quick that way we don't deviate too much from the topic because what i'm going at is going back to the the guy at the card shop who's being a bully basically the idea here is if the person in question if you were your kindness was disrespected and they continue the same undesired behavior that's when you know you should do something about it is if the undesired behavior continues after you've produced kindness but not done the quote mean thing back to them what do you think on that i mean because if it's recurring that means that the problem is not being dealt with or they're just or they just have a list of complaints Mm -hmm. in in a sense going back to that topic or they again they don't care because they themselves are afraid not afraid they refuse to see anyone else's perspective in this case he wants to be the best in the room he wants to be the most powerful he wants to be maybe in a sense respected and that's a reach Mm -hmm. um but it, I don't know about doing something about it. It's that at that point either there's going to be everyone that attends that shop is going to either have to unanimously agree to not play with him anymore until he changes his attitude, or someone's just going to finally have to step up to him and tell him that. But as long as people continue to give in to his tactics. <laughs> I like the <that>. so, <laughs> tactics because you know he's doing it on purpose. You know there's an alternative motive behind it. So unless someone steps up and and not put him in his place, because again you don't want to. It just says the truth of what yes, everyone else is thinking, right? And and not someone that he can manipulate because there's certain people there. Uh, again, I I know what shop you're talking about. I know what gentleman you're you're referring to. But then I also know a lot of the other There's people. There's actually two of them, but yeah. 
One I, of them in particular, yeah, you know. I, I know one. But either way, they, they, they're the same person overall. Mm-hmm. And the same thing, you don't even need to do it to both of them. If you do it to one, the other one might get the hint. And if not, then you might need a repeat. But even then, this, the person who can have the ability to quote unquote, yes, I'm using air quotes, yes. put them in their place might be two different people because the one person that I know we're referring to, there are some people there at the shop that if they try to pull that stunt, air quotes, he's not going to, it's not going to have the same effect because he knows that he has power control I know what you mean that an other, influence. more people yeah he has more influence that's it yeah he has influence over them so he's going to be like oh someone put you up to it but if there's other people who he doesn't have influence over but still respects and it should be anyone that shows up in that shop because if you're there to if you're at that shop you're there for a reason which is to play the particular games that we're there for um he has to he has to respect what that person says and especially if everyone if he's saying what everyone else is thinking then the person we're referring to is going to look at everyone else and they're just going to sit there and nod or or kind of sit there in agreement with what that person said and he's going to have nothing else to do but either stop showing up or change his attitude yes sink or swim <laughs> pretty much um but again i it that like i said i I want to make sure people don't think that we're saying violence is the key. No, I said we were talking about verbal. Right, but I'm saying the verbal altercations, not to get verbally into an argument with someone, but handle it more like you were talking about, just speaking what everyone else was thinking. Yeah, it's healthy to be disagreeable. It does require tact. Oh, there's nothing wrong with disagreeing. You can disagree with someone and still shake hands and walk away at the end of the conversation or move on to a totally different topic. And again, that's another weird thing in today's day and age is people feel like if you disagree with me, we can't talk. We can't be friends. I can never talk to you again until you change your perspective. Yes, yeah, similar. Another thing that they could also be afraid of. I'm glad you brought that up about the disagreeing is another thing people are afraid of when they try to establish why they disagree with something is they might be afraid of what they say back. And this particular person in question that we're mentioning at a card shop this person is very quick to insult people in a matter i think i think in this case he's more afraid of having to change his perspective or change his style i'm gonna go with style style um because if if he accepts the fact that no one likes the way that he plays or the the way he goes about talking to people, he's a. I feel like he might be afraid. Oh, don't drop that. Uh, he might be afraid of, like you said, kind of what people would say back to him. Yes. Continuing. Continuing. Little bit of technical difficulties. Never hurt anybody, Never except. Hurt the products. <laughs> so that was quite fascinating. Another question people are probably wondering if anyone is still tuned in is why should they listen to us? Why should they listen to us about stop being a bitch, make life your bitch? What do you think? Why they should still be tuned in and listening? Yeah, why should they do what we're saying of trying to seize control of their problems? Ooh, that's a good question. And it's not so much of... I mean, I don't think anything we say will persuade anyone to try it. I think it's one of those, you just get to try it and see what happens. Sometimes people look for the answer and for someone to give them the answer versus not getting permission but sometimes you're just going to try something on your own whether yes it's you know trying a certain uh, fad or diet or a technique or anything 
sometimes people want to follow the fad because it's giving them permission or it's telling them to do so versus actually just taking it upon themselves to say, you know what, let me try that. That sounds like something that I could do. That sounds like a way that I'd want to handle a situation. Or I have someone similar in my life that nothing else seems to work. So maybe I should listen to these two random guys who seem to know what they're talking about and try their technique because nothing else has worked thus far, so I have nothing to lose. That's a good point. It is very difficult to try to answer that question of why should they listen to us. Ultimately, it's up to you. If you want have a problem or a series of recurring problems in your life, it's up to you. If you want to do something about it, rise up to the occasion, take care of it in whatever way you can figure out, or you can allow those to pile up and hopefully not, but potentially wallow in misery. Because you guarantee misery if you do not fight for yourself. You have a chance of failing and a chance of succeeding by fighting, but again, if you choose not to fight and seize control of your problems, you will guarantee your own misery. And I can guarantee you that. So I highly suggest do whatever you can to take care of recurring problems in your life because you will feel so much better when you do. And you will seize control of your life and you will inspire people around you as well. Do you have any other comments to add, Brent? No, I think you said it all pretty good. I mean, on audience of one, I always say I'm not here to fix anything. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not here to give out solutions. I'm more the type of person who likes to give suggestions and ideas and help people change their perspective to possibly open up their mind to someone else's perspective or thoughts so that way it makes it easier for them to make decisions in their life. Some that they may not have thought of because they're so stuck in their ways um, and just kind of let the, the people kind of take out of what they hear versus those podcasts and shows that tell you what you need to do or not do. Well, at the end of the day, we're each our own person and everyone handles things differently. So um, like you said, at the end of the day, you just got to kind of stop complaining and do something about it in whichever uh, way fits you and your lifestyle not just because someone told you that it's the right thing to do well said that's all we have for the day you all have a good one